Hello, everybody. My name is Michelle Thompson. I'm an engineer and open source activist. I am very proud to be here today to talk about M17. M17 is an RF protocol that is completely open. It is simple to understand and to implement. It's optimized for amateur radio use, and it is extensible. It has three protocol layers, physical, data link, and application. Full documentation of the protocol can be found at the link below. The first section is the air and IP interface specification. M17 uses four FSK modulation running at 4,800 symbols per second with a deviation index of 0.33. This is intended for transmission in a nine kilohertz channel bandwidth. Channel spacing is 12 and a half kilohertz. The symbols pass through a root raised cosine shaping filter before transmission and after demodulation at the receiver. The data link layer section explains the difference between packet mode and stream mode. In stream mode, an indefinite amount of payload data is sent continuously. There are no breaks in the physical layer transmission. Stream mode uses frames. Packet mode uses packets. Both stream and packet mode use a link setup frame. The link setup frame contains all the information needed to set up an M17 link, namely a destination address, a source address, a type indicator, a metadata field, a 16-bit CRC, and a tail so that the convolutional encoder can flush. M17 uses modern forward error correction. Different schemes are used for different parts of the transmission. First frame of a transmission contains a full link setup frame. These link setup frame fields are convolutionally coded using a rate one-half coder with a constraint length of five. In subsequent frames, chunks of the link setup frame are encoded with a Golay code and sent out one partition per traffic frame. This lets late listening stations figure out if the full message should be decoded or not. The frame number and data payload are convolutionally encoded as was done for the link setup frame. The encoded chunks of the link setup data and the encoded payload are interleaved together for transmission. The appendix of the protocol specification covers things like address encoding, amateur radio call sign encoding, call sign formats, the decorrelator sequence, interleaving, IP networking, and a KISS protocol adaptation. M17 project consists of the people and the spaces dedicated to building the hardware and software that make the M17 protocol come to life. Open source code, open source hardware, and open source algorithms are the building blocks of radios that can do voice communications, point-to-point -point data, broadcast telemetry, and more. The team is international, dedicated to cooperative and collaborative work, and has an active and welcoming online community. Where do you find M17 implementations? There is a page of integrations on the website at the link below. The easiest way to get started with M17 is with an application like Droid Star. Within minutes, you can be ready to check in to the M17 weekly net on Fridays at 1700 UTC. Use the M17-M17C reflector. Devices such as Repeater Builder can be programmed to turn analog radios into M17 digital stations. MMDVM modems can be configured to be M17 digital stations as well. The Titera MD380 Handy Talkie, after minor hardware and firmware modifications, can be an M17 radio. This path is under active development by a team called OpenRTX. M17 and OpenRTX work closely together on bringing the M17 mode to life on readily available hardware, such as the MD380. OpenRTX is also working on a custom radio card and has led the way in promoting M17 protocol inclusion in commercial radio products. Imagine an open source mode like M17 being available off the shelf and out of the box, as well as through published open source hardware and software designs. This work is going on right now and will be successful. M17 is also possible with the TNC3, can be accomplished on multiple SDR platforms, and works on a growing number of terrestrial repeaters. Want to get involved? Help is wanted in several areas, specifically working with the OpenRTX team on implementing M17 and MD380 and other radios, 
improving MMDVM's M17 support, improving the specification. For example, should we add the color code info to the link setup frame? Testing more radios for M17 capability and working on the M17 module. Funding for M17 was obtained from ARDC. Fiscal sponsorship and a variety of support is provided by Open Research Institute. M17 exhibits at events throughout the year and participates in technical conferences like FOSDEM. The team is building an open source lab in the eastern United States to carry the project through to being a complete radio product.